Okay. Let me see. No one's ever done that. He's a lawyer. That's why I will. Uh, I was gonna say. He's in the mood talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's not the first time, but it's no, unconventional. <laughs> okay, uh, today I am going to be talking about the rules lawyer mindset. But specifically, I'm going to be talking about how it applies if the rules lawyer is the GM. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Now, before we start, uh, as the standard introduction that people have been doing in these talks so far, let me talk about myself. So, who is BJ Resho? Gardo! <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I am starting to become known as Gardo, but <laughs> in the internet space, I have been known as Nos yes. Uh And that is because during 4th edition, I was able to, I was able to create two PDF ebooks for fourth edition D D. That's Aswang Shape Changing Wars, which was preceded by Tikbalan Guardians of Kalikasan. This is a cla a race handbook and this is a monster monster handbook. Uh, I also have cur I cur currently have something else in the works, but I will announce it when it's almost done. <clears throat> okay. So that's me as a tabletop RPG member, uh, as a member of this community. Uh, as a professional, I am known as an actuarial analyst, so there's a lot of math. Okay. Is so, this going? <laughs> <laughs> so one, one of the one of the nice <coughs> jokes that I've heard about math and mathematicians is that is their comparison with philosophers. Philosophy, they say yes, yes. I'm a philosopher. <laughs> 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 Go against the great old one. Suicide. <laughs> 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 Talk over. <laughs> well, yeah. Philosophy does precede mathematics. Yes. Oh. I will agree. I will agree. But, <laughs> again, this is this is a joke. Philosophy is a game with objectives and no rules. Whether or not you agree with that or not, it's up to you. Mathematics, on the other hand, is a game with rules and no objectives. We're just about the rules, <laughs> which actually ties in nicely with the talk. So you know, but at heart I am a mathematician. <laughs> but all in all, all, all these things that I that I have done and I have been doing and I will do is nothing really. I'm just a guy who enjoys oh. tabletop RPGs, <laughs> and it just so happens that I have some ideas. <laughs> He has an 80% probability of being in the slide. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, let's let's get things in order. What is this talk about? What is this talk not about? We are going to examine rules lawyer motivations. Why do players become rules lawyers in the first place? We'll look into that. So, once we understand how rules lawyer are, how rules lawyers are motivated. We look at how rules lawyering can be positively applied to GM. So, uh, uh, an addendum is, remember, I am not saying that this is how mm -hmm. you should GM. There are narrative ways to GM, there are simulationist ways, and then there's the rules lawyer ways. There are cer those are certainly other viable mindsets, and actually most GMs would be a mix of these. Styles. Is that my name over there? Yes, Mon calls these mindsets hats okay. in his last talk. <laughs> See, I, I'm connecting it. Thank you. <laughs> so, let's start. Uh, the rules lawyer. Let's look at what we have to work with. Okay, credit to XKZD. Okay. Season 6. So, by, by the way, what, what we're doing is we're going to examine. I'm not actually going to tell you how to GM. As a as a rules lawyer, we're, we're just going to look at it. Ano bang meron dito? What can work? What cannot work? If you disagree with me, feel free to do so. So we'll just look at it. Before we do that, though, this is kind of a theoretical um, discussion. So we are going to tackle a lot of rules uh, terms, rather. <laughs> we we actually aren't going to tackle rules. I, I I did not include rules in this talk. So first of all, I will use RPG. As, uh, as my default term when I'm referring to our hobby. 
I'm not going to add tabletop. I'm not going to add uh, TTRPG mm. or anything like that. We all know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. TTRPG. <laughs> 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 so, we are also going to talk about uh, raw and write a lot. What's raw and write? Raw is rules as written. So, kung ano nakasulat dyan, ito yung mangyayari. Okay. Rules as intended is, maybe they made this rule because this is they it. what they want to happen. It's like the Bible. And that's another hat. There's also going to be some discussion on player agency. What is player agency? Player agency is the ability of a player to change his surroundings within the game. Mm. So, for example, something that does not have player agency is if mukhang bangin siya pero hindi makatalon si Lara Croft. Mm -hmm. Eh gusto kong mamatay si Lara Croft eh, ba't di ako makatalon? <laughs> Walang player agency. So, that's one example of, player, of the lack of player agency. It's also interesting, a lot of people want to see Lara Croft die. <laughs> <laughs> Must be some kind of fetch. Okay, there's also rule zero. When I mention rule zero, what do we mean? Rule zero is the first and mostly unwritten rule, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, of tabletop RPGs in general. And the rule is, it has a lot of versions. These are two of the most popular versions. The first one is the GM is always right. It doesn't matter if the rule says you're right, if the GM says you're wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's going, although that's going to also be a source of conflict that we could tackle later on. And then another variant of rule zero is don't give the GM ideas much. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. yes. But unfortunately, there's also one reason why sometimes players plot behind the GM's map, which is not so good. If the GM is wrong, see rule number one. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and then we're also going to talk about rule of cool a little bit. Uh, rule of cool is basically this rule here. Oh, no, Suspension of disbelief is directly proportional to no. awesomeness. Oh, I thought it should be quieter. Okay. Basically, <laughs> the rule of cool in a lot of games is that uh, as long as it looks awesome enough, it doesn't matter if he's defying gravity. <laughs> uh, or if, if we look at Toy Story, this is falling with style. Okay, nice. there's also going to be a lot of talk about the rules lawyer itself. There is uh, some confusion sometimes. The rules lawyer and the simulationist are different kinds of mindsets. Mm -hmm. there, are, there is some overlap, but basically a rules lawyer will look at rules for consistency. A simulationist will look at the real world and try to adapt it into uh, new, ex new or existing rules to, so that their expectation of reality will be realized. Uh, but if you want more things about simulationists, ask Justin. Uh, <laughs> he's very good at yes. it. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Juan de la Cruz on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why do we need rules anyway? Uh, who here as children played Cops and Robbers or... The, Cops and Robbers is actually somewhat uh, out, of, out of style already when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid, the game to play was Charge. You know, you know, charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. You sit, you sit like this, and then the other player sits in front of you, and then you clap your hands together, and then you have different moves. Charge. Uh, most moves require a charge. Yeah. For a time, because Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball Z is the most popular variant. Of that. You you charge, and then more charges means more powerful attacks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you want to have a Kamehameha, that's five episodes worth. So that's five charges. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're if you're going to do what Piccolo did to Raditz, that's also another five charges. But if you're just going to do Krillin's stupid pizza energy ball thing, that's just one charge. Mm -hmm. And it, people can dodge. And there's also reflect, there's some sword, and lots of lots of other things. But what's the problem? The problem there is that the rules are not codified. Uh, everyone has so, their own version. So everyone has their own version. So charge charge So you got it, the math. <laughs> 
No, I got out of it. It's a very different story altogether. <laughs> so basically, RPGs are ascended cops and robbers, ascended charge. We still like to play as people that are not us, or are us, as Rocky says, but with a, within a different world, within a, within different circumstances. So, but in order for us to do that, since we are, since this is not just our imagination, this is the collective imagination of a group. In order to do that properly, we need rules so that we have an understanding of how the reality of the game works. Okay. So, for example, in this case, Fast and the Furious, Cops and Robbers, and Cop Kami Robber. <laughs> kind of works. Okay. <laughs> Plus, they're, they're, they're basically a D&D group. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 In Cops. Well, in Cops. Uh, in these are GMs. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. the draw. That's him too. So, let's move on. <laughs> Rules lawyer. Rules lawyering is lawful neutral. Uh, everyone here has, uh, I hope everyone here has played some variant of D&D and they understand what I mean by lawful neutral. Yes. 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 I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, there is an alignment system wherein you have a good versus evil axis, which is very easy to understand, but you also have a lawful versus chaotic axis. Lawful is basically following rules. Chaos is uh, not following rules. Yourself and you know, self directed. Conservative? Libertarian? I would. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not part of the world. So, the uh, <laughs> natural state. Oh, yeah, that's true. The natural state of rules lawyering is lawful mm -hmm. Okay? It, it is therefore consistency and predictability. I'm a level 10 barbarian. I have 10 d12 hit dice. My constitution modifier is plus 3. I can probably fall 100 feet. I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It also gives us some sense of player agency because without a thorough understanding of the rules, especially with newbies, you will hear a lot of a lot of newbies ask, "Can I do this?" Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. A rules lawyer typically becomes a rules <coughs> lawyer so that they can say, "I can do this," before the GM shuts them down. Okay, so that's one reason why a lot of people be become famous lawyers. They want to, they want to already have an idea na pwede to, this can work. And then if it cannot work, then that will be a GM to player discussion of why it shouldn't work. Okay, but unfortunately, rules lawyer, yes. Does that mean that rules lawyers are creations of GMs? Mm. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm a philosopher. <laughs> Sort of like how math followed yeah. philosopher. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mind blown. Yes, actually, uh, I will. I will agree to the to the point that there are certain GMs that breed more rules mm -hmm. lawyers. Yeah, yeah. 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 As opposed to yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your GMing um, style is tends to attract people that like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are a purely narrative kind of GM, you tend to attract people or players who enjoy that game. Mm -hmm. If you are a techie and you want to do charts and crunch, you attract and people will stay with you because those players want to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah you're in response to sir, uh, sometimes... Don't talk, sir, that we have to wait 10 more years. <laughs> uh, in response to a younger sir. <laughs> Sometimes it's actually the parent themselves that became the rule lawyer. Because uh, if they are in trouble, sometimes they will argue with the GM on how to get out of it. So it's not uh, basically just the GM that attacked them, but sometimes uh, they are also the rule lawyer. Kind of a serial. There are people that will be naturally rules lawyers. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. But, it, no, but there's also a valid point in saying yeah. that a certain type of GM will attract will tend to create rules lawyers because of how they GM. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's their style. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, um, let, let me share from my, from my, my ancient... <laughs> <laughs> from the ancient uh, texts. <laughs> the ancient texts. Okay. Uh, I, the, I, I'm in correspondence with a friend in Canada and he's the rules lawyer of the group. Mm -hmm. okay. What's interesting is that I'm very, very narrative and he's very rules lawyerish. 
instead of being a clash, he actually, we actually ground each other. And we were, I, I suppose we were lucky that our GM uh, encouraged both points of view mm -hmm. and actually yes. made it work for the group. Yes, which goes back to my earlier That's earlier right. point, wherein I, I say that being a pure rules lawyer is not necessarily the best way to GM for you. Mm -hmm. You could do that, but if you but if you choose to do that, then there are things that we should keep in mind, which is what we're going to discuss yeah. here. Uh, but at the same time, personally, I am not a pure rules lawyer, I think, well, for people who have played under me. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I also have a lot of narrative things. It just so happens that as someone who was trained in math, I can do a lot of math at the back of my head quickly. Yeah. So it doesn't really show too much. So it's really, I think the best way really would be a mix. Yeah. But there are also people who prefer to be a purist in one direction or the other. One direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally, uh, rules lawyering can be problematic because sometimes a rules lawyer is just too focused on minute details. Like, okay, the fireball is 20 foot radius. Uh, what is the volume of that sphere? <laughs> what? What? Four turns, pi r cubed. The r is 20 feet, that's four squares, and then oh, okay. will it hit my character? No! I actually know how to compute and that. Yeah. Yeah. And there will be times like that for a rules lawyer, which is where when the GM will step in, because the rules are there as... A, an aid to the game. It is not the game itself. There so, was actually a time when uh, games like Dungeons and Dragons were were marketed as a way to improve your math skills. Yeah, and I know a lot. I know a bunch of people who say or claim that they've gotten better at math because of Dungeons and Dragons and okay. similar games. It happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have to reverse the math. So, so rules lawyering by default is lawful neutral. On the other hand, a <laughs> okay. Yeah. On the other hand, <laughs> rules lawyering can also be lawful good. <laughs> okay, that's the Paladin and Hell from the first edition uh, player's handbook, which you can look at later if you want. <laughs> the keyword of the lawful good rules lawyer is that he is helpful. He will help you. He will help you Do make sure you that your build is viable. Oh, you want you want to be an awesome archer? Then take his feet. Then yeah. it's nice to have a rules lawyer at the table. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, they can they also tend to reference rules even if it does not directly benefit you. So uh, even if sometimes it's on the other extreme, they know that it will be detrimental to them if they reference this rule. Like oh, uh, let's for example, let's invent the rule like. You, when you fall, 1d6 for every 10 feet, but if you fall 50 feet or higher, you might break a limb. And then the GM forgets that. Let's say that rule exists. The rules lawyer will conveniently bring it up as his paladin falls to hell. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's very interesting. Uh, because sometimes rules lawyers get a bad rep, but they, yeah. they really do have a positive contribution to the table. It's just a matter of um, being able to communicate that properly. Mm -hmm. They can also be, this is a little bit of a stretch, they are checks and balances versus a potentially abusive GM. Mm -hmm. If your GM has a GM PC that's a level 27 wizard who loves to sleep with the goddess of magic, for example, and then, and then you face a bunch of monsters that are immune to everything except 10th level spells. You can't even get 10th level spells until you get an epic feat. Yeah. And you're level 17, you're just almost there. Then that's a problem. That's a pro problematic GM. That's when usually the rules lawyer will check that GM. Like, wait, you're not being fair. Mm -hmm. So, lawful good. For anyone who's played with a paladin character, lawful good is not necessarily good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes being helpful is problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you're trying to impose your helpfulness already. Mm -hmm. Like for example, yes. most most modern religions. <laughs> <laughs> so it becomes a problem when they think that their rules lawyering is the proper way because it's rules. It's the only way. Uh, it's the only way. It says so in this tablet here. 
And the stone tablet that you cannot sleep with someone who isn't your husband. But it's not my husband. What? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, where did we go? <laughs> <laughs> I we, went like <laughs> we went to a very strange place, yes. But I, I hope you understood. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and gaming relationships. <laughs> okay. Rules lawyering can also be noble yeah. evil. Keyword here is selfish. A rules lawyer will sometimes reference the rules as written, but only when it benefits yeah. him. Are you talking about yeah. both as the player and the GM in this context? Uh, we're currently player. looking at the player. player uh, uh -huh. We'll look at the GM a little bit later on. Alright? So, the very idea here is that they will conveniently ignore rules that do not help him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've looked at TV groups and they, they have a term for the local evil. Uh, Rose Lawyer called the Rouge Shark. Oh, okay. And they smell blood in the water. And <laughs> so, what are we going to do with Rouge Sharks? My suggestion is fuck that shit. <laughs> okay? We're here to look at the positive ways Rules Lawyering can be applied. There are negatives to every stereotype of play. And we should be able to stamp out the negatives. Like, look at that pit food. Look at what he's doing to the poor GM. What? <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. Mountain night. <laughs> 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 okay. So, now we'll look at behind the screen. Uh, I will admit that this is mostly a rough idea. Mm -hmm. So, what do we do when you are a rules lawyer and you are uh, behind the screen? D&D. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna be Gygax, the level 27 fighter mage! <laughs> okay. One of the first things that you will realize when you are a rules lawyer, by default, when that is your stereotype, I'm stereotyping because we are talking about a particular stereotype. Mm -hmm. when, uh, for example, as a player, I can be a rules lawyer stereotype. When I am in that role, as a player, I am a player, and I become a rules lawyer. Oh, <laughs> I, I want to make sure that the rules apply. Because, why do I want to do that? Because it sets a consistent world. Again, going back to falling, it has to be 10d6. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the expectation. Basically, it's like the rules of physics. It's how we understand the reality that that particular game world is in. Okay? But as a game master, it changes. You are no longer the lawyer. That's why we. Act, that's why I'm actually struggling with the title of the words lawyer. That's the famous word. But actually, when you are a game master, you stop being a lawyer and you start becoming the judge. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I like creepy. It's <laughs> so. Why, why do we have to make that distinction? This is going to go back to our initial discussion about raw versus right. It's the classic debate. What do you want to do? Do you want to follow rules as written or do you want to follow rules as intended? Now, one of the first things that I want to point out is that they are both starting in R. <laughs> They're both rules. Okay. 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 <laughs> Fine. Why is that important? Robert, well, that is important because as a judge, you are no longer trying to win an argument. You no longer are picking a side. You are just there to make sure that everything is fair that everything works as it's supposed to be. Which is my thesis for saying that as a rules lawyer, if you are on the GMC, you have to follow rules as intended. Rules as written are there only to get you so far, but that is also why you have rule zero. Because mm -hmm. you want it to be fair to everyone. For example, one of the things about rules as written that is problematic is, let's go to D&D 3.5 because that has a lot of rules. Uh, have you all heard of Pan Pan? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. 
Pan Pan is basically a kobold character that at level 1, if he summons Pazuzu, by calling Pazuzu three times, he can set a few wishes in such a way that he will become a character whose strength, dexterity, and all of his six stats become infinity. And it's legal by the rules. So, but, why, why will we do that in a game? Okay? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Rules by themselves do not make sense. So, that's why I actually, look, uh, that's why I actually brought up <coughs> this particular judge earlier. Because there was this uh, recent thing that she did where she admonished one of her lawyer, one of the lawyers in a hearing who was a former student of hers because they are basically sticking to rules as well. They, with, and they are now conveniently excluding the intent of the laws that they are implementing. So that is not the way to judge. The proper way to judge is to make sure that you are applying it in the way that it's supposed to be applied. Okay? So Rosa's written is basically right. <laughs> Rosa's intended is basically right. <laughs> yes. Um, let me just warn you guys, I'm going to go philosophical here. Uh, but I think this is relevant. Uh, Rose lawyers argue to end the conversation. Basically, they want to say, I'm right, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And basically, when they say you're wrong, that means shut up. Mm -hmm. okay. Judges exist to keep the conversation going. There is an author named James Carson. He wrote a book called Finite and Infinite Games. If you're, you can yes. find it, it's a very useful yes. book. And he makes a distinction between finite players, players who play to end the game, and players to continue the game infinitely mm -hmm. and I'd like to think that's what you are. Mm -hmm. So that might be a useful uh, guidepost. concept guidepost where the lawyer is a finite player to end the game and the judge is the infinite player to continue the game. But the, the game master is also there to end that particular argument. One of the reasons why there is a there is a standing conflict between a rules lawyer and the game master is because a rules lawyer will insist that he or she is right, and the game master does not agree. So, to me personally, what I do with that is that's when I apply the reason. Okay, I'm the GM right now. This is what we will do. Now, it might not be what you like, and I understand. Let's talk about it after. Now. Going back, <coughs> rules as written or rules in general, being a rules lawyer is lawful neutral. Okay, it's neutral in position. But as a GM, you want to go towards the side of being communicative, being good. You want to make sure that your players are having fun. Being a rules lawyer is not an excuse to be a dick. Right? And you also understand certain points like not everyone is a rules lawyer. There are there are players who lean more towards narratives. There are players who lean more towards being an actor. And when and when we have all of that together, you have your place. You have your role within the game as a as a machine of different parts. But at at the same time, you have to remember that you are not the rules are not the most important thing. Eventually, we will discard rules for the for the sake of fun. So that's one thing that I think a rules lawyer as a GM will need to remember. <coughs> so, so even though you follow the rules for consistency, because you want to follow the rules for consistency because you don't want to keep changing your mind, that will turn off a lot of players. Yes? But that, that now makes me ask the question, if we discard the rules for the sake of fun, then why Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, why Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition, why Fate, why 13th Age? The rules are there to help you. They're not there to help the rules. That's what I'm saying. Yes, Lawrence. Okay, so the way I see it, two things. One, 
raw and and dry. There be yes, right. Okay. So rules. One of the things that that we need to uh, think first is that everything, regardless if we say that this is how raw is how raw is when you when you think about it. Uh, no matter what what you say or what you think mm -hmm. about robbers, I actually every every time you read a rule, you're, you automatically interpret it. You try to understand how it's uh, supposed to be inter uh, intended or how it's supposed <coughs> to be used. So, so raw is a lie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 technically, raw is a lie. It is wrestling. <laughs> All raw is right. Mm. Even, no matter, I know, it, even if it's, like, for example, the Mountain Knight uh, joke a while ago. I mean, if you have a certain mindset, Mountain Knight is a regular, regular knight you know, on a horse. But if you put it in a different context, a Toby context, a Toby context, it's a happy knight. <laughs> now, the second thing. Because despite the fact that all are is right, we still need to establish a baseline, mm -hmm. a baseline of expectation, a baseline from which both players and GMs can come together to play a game. Therefore, the rules. Mm -hmm. That's a very good way of putting it. Clarification, yes? uh, I just want to clarify. Uh, if a player is a rules as intended player, is he also a rule lawyer or? Uh, what if you uh, what if I'm a rule as intended player? So what uh, well, I'm sorry. Well, you can answer that. Comment. Well, part you are because the fact that you are calling out rules means yeah. that you have taken the time mm -hmm. to oh, analyze look it up. this. Okay. Yes, Admittedly, when I was younger, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't comment. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> Younger, yeah, I can quote like paragraphs from second ed and then all. But then again, diba, it eventually I, I, I'll prove that. That's how that's, that's what I guess. So, I don't think it's something that you necessarily have to uproot. It's still something that a lot of people find value in memorizing which page can you find the polymorph spell, what paragraph references that you can only. Yeah, that's good, but. I don't have the time right now. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but what well, I'm saying is, you know, there are, there are people who will, who will be like that, who will continue to be like that. Yes? <coughs> Just a comment lang dun sa rules as written as mm -hmm. intended. Personally, I don't see a difference between the two. Kasi ano eh, if the rules were written well, it should already carry all of if, the intent. If, if the rules if, were written well. Mm, so, no, yeah. that's very rare. No, I mean, if, <laughs> if, if there's a rules as written in this file, it's the problem of who made up the document. No, no it's, it's a matter of interpretation. Well, Everything is a matter of interpretation. Yeah. Remember, the written word is subjective enough. It yeah. depends yeah. on, you know, <laughs> if, if <laughs> your mindset. It depends on like it all, it all depends interpretation. Uh, okay. It's not written. Let's try to organize this. We'll start with you and then Adrian. <laughs> and, uh, I remember Sir Adrian. <laughs> Sorry! I thought we were socialists. <laughs> I remember when I first encountered White Wolf, mm -hmm. and it was so revolutionary that thing on the first few pages. The golden rule. The rules, the golden rule. The rules get in the way. The skirts are devoid. But I think that that's it's how it. Variant of rule zero. Yeah. 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 But I think that, that it's like <coughs> the, the rules are there. It's the framework upon which we do our games. It's there. It's the system that we that we chose to use for our games. But you know, rule zero. If Things are getting in the way for it. Basically, to synthesize what we're... I think we are all in agreement now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to synthesize what we have been talking about so far. There are rules, but it will be it will be used to interpret the shared experience of a particular group. Mm -hmm. It might change from group to group, but for every group, eventually, they will have something... Uh, they will have a use for rules. That will be their rules as intended. And from game to game. Uh, I think the rules as written will come up more often in theoretical building that you see on the internet. Charles. Oh. 
may max si Blink Zeta. Especially if my build, my build should work because the internet said it should. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. But anyway, we'll go to Adrian and then we'll move on. Uh, I'm going to be referencing classic films again. Uh, the only book at that time for me was first edition AD&D. Okay. And, and first edition d and The problem was that the Dungeons and Dragons was a couple together Frankenstein's monster uh, <laughs> of a war game. Of a war game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Case in point, <clears throat> how did you ever? How, how do you interpret the initiative, the surprise rolls of a gnome versus an elf? One was a D6, the other was a D12. How did that work? I remember an entire afternoon spent with a group of players trying to work out that system, and, was, and there was nothing in the book that explained it. Apparently, someone forgot to explain how the variant dice worked. The system was broken. But in spite of that, we were able to get, we were able to extract the experience that may not have been what Gary Gax and Anderson intended, but was something we felt was worthwhile. The system was broken. There were contradictions the lore. Nuts. And those contradictions were the ones that brought up the rules lawyerings of a um, volume of a, of a, of a massage advice. Uh, how much damage can a. Uh, if you were to cast Feather Fall from a certain height, would you be able to cast it given the amount of time and still not crush yourself? You know? mm. Conundrums like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a minimum of 15 feet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you also you also can't blame us because that was new. Uh -huh. right? yeah. The only thing we had at that time was physics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now if you look at the writing today, if you go back to the written word, you see that writers very consciously take those mistakes into account mm -hmm. and therefore rule zero. Therefore the rule doesn't work. Talk about it with your group. If if it's a one-time thing, it's a one-time thing. If it's outside the physics of your world, make that consistent. Rules like that came up after the first edition, after white book came. And, and I was hoping that in this day and age, the rules lawyer would have been a meeting of the past that would have come back to haunt us. Apparently not. <laughs> oh, but that, that goes back to. What I want to <coughs> reference then that rules lawyers are not necessarily that bad. They are they're a different kind yes. of yes. They, they just have a mindset that sometimes is necessary for a game. The, yes. the, the common yeah, experience but, is very important, I think. But I think that's why this dichotomy needs to exist between like rules as written and rules as dependent. It's because the well the perfect system hasn't been made yet. It will right? never because be that's why we have editions, right? I mean, yeah. each edition... That's why we have real life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it does not real perfect. life is the perfect system. Why are we... I tried so many to show you nothing after. So fun. <laughs> <laughs> real life. Yeah. In, in a way, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. this the... This new edition. The way I see it, as, uh, since I've been playing at, uh, some RPGs from different uh, generations, uh, I've noticed that uh, the systems now, not only are most of them more narrative, uh, say for Shadowrun, which is a highly simulationist, but the point is... Good job, uh, Yeah, good job, The <laughs> point is that the, I've, I've been noticing that the, the recent systems seem to be pointing more towards uh, refer to your GM, always talk to your GM. This is uh, still rule zero, but in, it's presented in a way that Encourages uh, communication. communication. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which I think was not really present at the at first edition, second edition, yeah. Yeah. which is yeah. what and which I feel is why the negative side of rules lawyering was really prevalent because there was no communication between the players and the GMs. Uh, I'd like to wrap to that. I think it's less about how the rules were written, but more the mindset of how the mm. game was played. Mm. Yes. Yes. Um, the old approach to James was adversarial. The GM is there to challenge the players. Yeah. The players have to defeat the challenges. Nowadays, a lot of the direction in gaming is more cooperative, mm -hmm. that the two are creating a, a shared experience. So it's now more 
written that you can discuss it with your GM. So it wasn't a, um, there was no rule, therefore it had to be that way, but more, it was how it was played. Uh, and to conclude, uh, I would like to cite a recent example where we were talking about the crossbow, what was that? Thing? The double crossbow. The double crossbow. Uh, the double handheld crossbow. The double handheld crossbow. Yeah. Yeah. crossbow yeah. Thing. <laughs> the big top handheld It was a very long discussion, right? Mm -hmm. But in the end, it really boils down to my, my understanding of that is depends on your group. If your group is okay with having two crossbows, uh, right. Letting you reload them at the same time, uh, with your the same round, <laughs> then that's your work. Maybe, maybe my, my personal suggestion there was you toss one crossbow, yeah. you reload, and then you toss this. Gardo! 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 Yes! You, you Gardo it, right? <laughs> but not all, not all gaming groups will be fine with that, and that's okay. I think what's not okay is if you is if you start telling other groups that no, that cannot work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. That's yeah, that's where the interpretation comes out. Short mm -hmm. Back in the eighties kasi, uh, <laughs> it was marketed talaga for, for nerds and geeks. Because that was the primary market. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the historic uh, aspect mm -hmm. and the business sense of RPGs. Yeah. Of course, nerds and geeks tend to work like these complicated things because Sky Guys they love arguments yes yeah. and eventually when gaming found itself into the mainstream after the 700 Club and the Walani yeah, Stigma of right. the right. 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 and everyone was going it was necessary to remarket the entire industry and the entire hobby as a brand new packaging because I'm a marketing uh, prof a mm -hmm. professional uh, by, by, uh, by job so that's my job so during that 90s to early 2000s, they were hoping to make, that's why a lot of indie games were on trying to stay away from this D&D mindset about nerds and trying to accept people who are new into the game. Mm. So that, I think that is how it went towards and the it's a good way, And it's a good way to push the, the hobby moving forward. Yes, because right now even 5th Ed and even 13th Age, the, the best systems and fate have one thing in common, and what is that? They're all newbie friendly. You can easily teach the game. If I if you if you go back to our old shelves and get out, let's say A D and D second ed or first ed, they'll be shocked because be, oh you cannot bend bars or lift gates. Why one? Because you are not 18 strength plus plus plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so oh, you yeah. cannot bend bars or lift gates. <laughs> Those things yeah, are quite but, stupid right now. But yeah. You know, Last night, we'll yeah, but uh, <laughs> right, sure. yeah, 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 this is really how I ended the talk to be this because this is yeah, but, yeah, but, but, yeah, but uh, gaming uh, needed to evolve uh, past uh, rules as written because um, MMOs exist, video yeah. games exist. Like, if we really wanted to just Crunch down on rules. I, and let's just play Jablo, right? Whatever, uh -oh. right? It will do all the math for us. Yeah. 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 And, and there's well, no debate. Your build will always work. Just exactly, your build right? Works. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons I think why the newer games are simpler because now you want it, it to be it. more on the narrative side. Yeah. But the rules lawyering will still be there. Uh, um, move on to time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so being a rules judge does have its own challenges. One of the first one of the first things is you're going to have to remember rules. Cause I don't recommend rules lawyering as a GMing style if you're not the type of person who would remember rules. Because be what will happen yeah. then is you, you will reference the rule book a lot, which will bond the game down. Oh, yes. That makes you look unprofessional. <laughs> yep. On the other hand, you also have to remember your rulings, which is uh, different. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes, you don't remember the rules, but you decide that, okay, you fell 50 feet, you break your leg. The next time someone falls 50 feet, they better break their legs too. <laughs> Why always their legs? <laughs> Consistently. That's, that's how the pieces work. No one ever fell on their head. Pag ganun lag. Pag lag lag sa ulo, bali pa rin yung legs. Because that's how it works. But that's... Comes out of things like that. 
Okay, yeah, but I can that, use that's a that's a funny example. But what I'm saying is, bro, falling mm -hmm. if falling has a, an effect that is not just damage, you just have to remember that it will always have an effect beyond damage. Yes. That way, when the paladin falls, the devil who cannot fly, let's make sure that it's a devil that cannot fly. <laughs> he pushes that, that particular devil 50 feet, then that would be problematic for the devil. It's important to be realistic about our fantasy characters. Yes. Just <laughs> <laughs> so with a straight face and without irony. <laughs> okay, another challenge is something that has, uh, that has been brought up earlier. Being a rules lawyer will naturally attract min maxes. So, how will you deal with the min maxing character, uh, with the min maxing player? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Why do you? Why should you? Uh, why should you tell people that they cannot perform their fantasy? Right. Mm -hmm. The only reason why that will why that will not work is if it is at the expense of someone else's fun. Mm -hmm. If if they are too powerful to the point that no one else can contribute. It's ruining that. It's ruining that. That's when you talk to the player. But if it's just min maxing and then people in general like that he's the guy who deals one hundred damage per turn. Wow. <laughs> then. Let him do it. There's always a bigger fish. <laughs> and you don't necessarily have to adjust the challenges. I mean, he's supposed to be the guy who can punch you for one of the damage. Batman. Hmm. <laughs> Guard, though. <no. laughs> <laughs> not, so do not deny player agency. Okay. Well, uh, I, I think of myself sometimes as uh, a rules lawyer and a GM. And I feel that if you already, I mean, if you are going to be referring uh, referring to the rules a lot, you might as you you already trust that the rules are designed well enough, or if you if it's not designed well enough, you already have the rulings to make sure that even if they mid max, it's to the benefit of everyone. Yes. So why would it be bad? Okay. Although. <laughs> I, I don't understand that there will be cases where it becomes problematic for you as a GM. For example, if it ruins uh, some, some type of balancing. If that is a concern for you, I think my suggestion would be to talk to the player after the game. But at the time they spring it on you, you let them do it. But at the same time, you also have to figure out why are they springing this on me? Because I've had rules lawyers who like to min, to min max. But usually, when they do something that's awesome, they talk to me about it first. Like, oh, I found this thing that, with this thing, I can deal 100 damage per round. It's awesome, isn't it? You share in that, you share in that joy that they have, because that's what gaming is all about. Okay. Okay. Uh, based on my based, based on my experience, the the best games that me and my group and some of the people who played other me I enjoyed is when the rules are in the background and not are in the meat of the table and constantly being discussed. Okay. Uh, what do I mean? Even I have a tendency to rule lawyer, like you know, I I, I can memorize like the old systems, but we don't. That's not. That's not the majority of what we talk about on the gaming table, right? The majority of what we talk about is, you know, uh, character, uh, character interaction, uh, NPCs, and story-wise. But still, there is there are rules involved. No, don't make no mistake. There has to be like rules for for. I agree for with God, the the best way to be a rules lawyer as a GM is to not have the players realize that you are constantly. It's a challenge. It it, it takes a lot. Way. Of experience to because sometimes you're it's constantly on your head that hey on page can we have to discuss this it take 30 minutes everyone's not enjoying that because oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it has to happen or right. okay uh, final thing with uh, uh, I'm, I'm about to raise a concern mm -hmm. uh, the direction this discussion is taking is that we move from rules as written Mm -hmm. Where, presumably, yeah. anyone who reads the book can take it. That's the presumption. It's not the actual reality, but that's the presumption. Mm -hmm. Two, consult your GM. I have no problem about that, but where does the GM come from? <coughs> from the gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
And therefore, on the seventh day, he created the GM. And that's been one of my concerns. How the the the, the strong point and the weak point of our hobby is the GM. How do we replicate ourselves? Do we pour water on ourselves at midnight? Doesn't <laughs> work. Feed. Uh, that was one of the well, motivations why I set this. Uh, I started this, this, this thing up. This is, uh, I feel like this is part of how we do it. Uh, sure. this, is, this is the feeding after midnight. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, uh, yeah. one of the reasons why I also proposed this talk is because there has been a lot of posts on narrative styles. There has been and you want the voice. Like, and I want the voice out there. And we allow the you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I would actually want to, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Are we done? Yeah. Awesome. Any questions for me today? Uh, like, any questions? How do you oh, uh, any last have problems last with your gaming groups? Uh, and, you know. yung kanina lang, uh, clarify ko lang ulit. So basically, if you are playing rules as intended, you're also a no lawyer, but a good follower, you're parang ganun. As a GM. It's still, GM. Uh, it's still, it's still subjective. Subjective pa rin. Oh, Subjective okay. pa rin dun sa intention na gusto mong ihati dun so, sa table. So, para all the lawyer ka pa rin? Yes, yes. Okay. Kasi you're still referencing... Yeah. So, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Let me oh. yeah, yeah. share this exactly. story. Um, again, this is old school. Not old school as in game style, but my era. Um, we had a GM who okay, nice. ran... I think it was a Vietnam game. And... Um, they ha the players were confronted with a wall. The the one of the player characters <coughs> gathered all of the C4 or ex and explosives he could find. I, I don't like those specifically C4, but just explosives. Piled it against the wall, set the fuse, and the GM ruled that the explosive went off. But there was no effect, and the players were askance. Why? What happened? And the GM simply said. You don't have the the, skill. the um the demolition skill. The wait 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 wait. Remember, think of the context of the story. Uh -huh. This is something like yeah. the gazebo story. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the gazebo story. In which case, uh, immediately my rules lawyer friend said, "Very well. I take my pistol. I have no ranks in pistol. I shoot myself in the head, and I survive." <laughs> 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 and and. And I think that's what kind of set the impetus for where our hobby is heading. You know? From rules, I, looking back, I, I don't blame the push mark or anything. Okay. But now that Can we have these games, it's because, the, because all of these past mistakes have set the stage for the, accept, the acceptance of these kinds of games. So we're building, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Like it. <laughs> and <Mon. laughs> so we can. Uh, so please enjoy this while you can. <laughs> so we